All right. Uh, welcome to New Orleans, everybody. And welcome to the 27th uh, DrupalCon. Uh, could you hear me right there at the back? Yeah, sure. Great. So uh, I came here like a couple of days back in New Orleans, the great city. I went to the French quarters, Bourbon Street. And I'm sure most of you guys have went there too. So yeah, it's a great city, uh, a great DrupalCon. So yeah, uh, welcome here. A quick note before we uh, start our session. Drupal Association encourages all of you to participate in the code sprints, which will happen on Friday the 13th. And uh, so there's something for everyone. So if you are a newbie, if you are a newbie to code sprints, you could join the first time sprinter workshop. If you are a pro, if you know how code sprint works, you could join the general sprints. Or you, if you want a mentored core sprint, you could join the mentored uh, core sprint workshop as well. So code sprints are a great way to contribute back to Drupal. So I encourage all of you to uh, go there and make your mark. Thank you. All right. So many of you might have seen the session description. And many of you might have questions. What is type Drupal? So the answer is there's nothing like type Drupal. I've made it up. So, uh, what did what, what? So what this really means is, now all of you know there is PHP. There is a new PHP out there, PHP seven. Uh, it's a it's a brand new PHP with lots of cool features, and one of the cool feature is uh, the scalar type hinting feature, the return type declarations feature and some two or three features regarding typing. So what we are doing here is, uh, we'll see in this session how we could leverage those features, those typing features, and write better code in general and better Drupal 8 code in general. So that's what type Drupal is. It, we leverage PHP 7, it's typing features to write Drupal 8 code. So we'll understand what are the features of uh, typing features of PHP. Uh, we'll look at some examples, we'll then look at a module which is created in D8, a Drupal 8, which uses PHP 7. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Aditya. Uh, you can call me Adi. Uh, I work as a solution architect in Blistering Solutions, which is headquartered here in California. Uh, Blistering has been involved in Drupal development since 2007, especially the headless or decoupled Drupal development. And if you have any further questions, uh, I mean, we have been fortunate to support many Drupal cons and Drupal camps. We were the uh, diamond sponsors for the last Drupal con in uh, Asia, in Mumbai. And if you have any more questions, you could contact me on this email or you could contact me on this uh, Twitter handle. All right. Uh, let us quickly go through the agenda for today. First, we'll look at the uh, concept of typing, what it generally means, and this goes beyond PHP. This is a programming concept. It's a very basic concept, but we'll get to know what is typing as a concept. Then we'll see how different programming languages, including PHP, structure the type systems, uh, structure the type systems, uh, including typing as a concept. Then we'll see the uh, existing type hinting feature in PHP, which is not something new in PHP 7. It's existing previously also. We'll look at the type hinting feature in PHP. We'll look at non-scalar type hinting feature. We'll look at a feature or a flaw, whatever you can call it. We'll look at type juggling in PHP. So this is all, which is, uh, this, uh, these five points are all existing in PHP. So this is not something new in PHP 7, but what is new in PHP 7 are these things. Scalar type hinting in PHP, return type declarations in PHP 7, type checking modes, type exceptions, which are a part of a broader concept called engine exceptions in PHP 7. And uh, finally, uh, we'll, see about, we'll see how we could use PHP 7 to write Drupal 8 code using the principles that we have learned. So yeah. All right. 
So, typing as a concept. What does typing or type hinting means, right? Uh, it simply means uh, we give data types to variable declarations where we declare variables to parameters or arguments of a function when we declare a function or define a function, sorry, return value of a function and expressions. So typing simply means giving data types to variable declarations, parameters of functions or arguments of a function, return value of a function and expression. This is a, this is a pretty basic thing, right? This is not related to PHP. It's a basic programming con uh, concept. So uh, now as we saw, right, uh, typing means giving data types to variables, parameters, return values. Now various programming languages structure their type systems according to these rules. Now, like in PHP, right? In PHP, we don't give a type of a variable by defining a variable. So these rules are different in different languages, and languages structure their type systems according to these rules. So let us look at those type systems. And whenever you search about type systems, you will get these four terms that we are going to see. First is strong type system. Now what this strong type system means is, uh, these type systems generally don't allow type violations in your program. Now what type violation means is, suppose you declare a variable, you declare a variable as an integer, and then somewhere down the line in your program, you assign a string value to your integer. So that is a type violation, right? You declare an integer, it's supposed to have an integer value, but then down the line, you give it a string value. So that is a type violation. So strong type systems, uh, generally don't allow type violation. It will, they will throw an compile error or they will throw an runtime exception when you try to do that. Uh, some examples of languages having strong type systems are Java and Python. Second is uh, the weak type system. Weak type system is a system where uh, in case of type violations, it allows, it basically performs some kind of type conversion. So let's let's take the same example. You defined an integer. You uh, gave that integer an integer value, but in, at some point in your program, you assign that integer a string. So it will try to convert that string value into integer. So it will try to convert some kind. Uh, try to do some kind of type conversion. PHP is an example of weak type system. Static type system, these, uh, the languages having static type systems are Java and C Sharp. Uh, they are more likely to throw in compile time error uh, if uh, there are type violations in your program. So they check the type violations at compile time. The last one is uh, dynamic type systems. Uh, they interpret the value of a variable, the type of that variable or type violations at runtime. So yeah, so these are the four type systems that we generally uh, see when you talk about typing or type hinting. So yeah. Now these four types of type system uh, generate or give us an interesting two-dimensional space. If you see here, a language, a programming language, could, could either have a strong type system or a weak type system a programming language could have either a static type system or a dynamic type system. So strong and weak are like opposites. Static and dynamic are like opposites. So Java here is having strong type system and a static type system. What that means is uh, Java is likely to throw compile time errors if there are type violations in your program. And yeah, and it's more likely uh, to uh, not allow type violations in your program. And so Python, right? Python is an example of strong typing and dynamic typing. PHP, our own PHP is an example of dynamic and weak typing. Okay, so uh, any questions still here? Okay, All right. So uh, one, one important point here is nothing is absolute in this case. So there is nothing such as absolute strong typing system. So this diagram or this classification just shows you that Java 
or Java tends to be a strong type system, tends to have a strong type system, and Java tends to have a static type system. So there are still some components in Java uh, where, uh, which follow the weak type system. Right, now we'll move on to uh, type hinting in PHP. What type hinting is, it simply means uh, it allows you to specify the type of data which a method is expecting. So let us look at this function. Uh, I have one function, RE function, uh, that accepts an integer array, an array. I have called this function at the bottom by passing it an array. So RE function, what this code tells you is RE function accepts one argument, which is array. So that is type hinting simply. You tell the function that uh, you, will accept, uh, you will expect an array as an argument. That is type hinting. Yeah, so we saw about type hinting, which is just uh, specifying the type of your argument. Then we'll see about non-scalar type hinting. Now before that, uh, let me explain you the difference between scalar and non-scalar variables, uh, non-scalar types and scalar types. Uh, scalar types are your primitive data types like integer, boolean, string, float, and non-scalar types are your complex data types like objects, arrays, callables, interface. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so these are non-scalar and scalar types. Now what PHP 5 supports is they support non-scalar type hinting. Yeah, so the same example that we saw earlier, this is PHP 5, by the way. Uh, the same example, uh, function RD function has one argument, it takes an array, uh, it prints an array, and uh, we are passing it in an array. So everything should work well. This snippet should return you, uh, should print an array. Now, uh, let us look at this example. This example would give us an error. Yeah, it will give us this error. So let us look what this error is. Argument one passed to RD function must be an instance of int, integer given. So what this means is PHP 5 doesn't support scalar type hinting, so you could not suggest that dollar my integer could be an integer, float, boolean, or string. So what this does is uh, the, the, the system hunts for a class named integer, and it expects an object of int class, integer class, uh, in this function, but it doesn't find any. So that's why it throws an error, argument one pass to other function, must be an instance of integer. So that means PHP 5 doesn't support scalar type hinting yet. So, uh, so by not having scalar type hinting, uh, what is the issue? What's the problem, right? So the problem is type juggling. So type juggling is a feature where we convert a variable type to the most appropriate variable type according to the action performed. To explain it further, let us go to this function. Uh, it's a very simple function. It just accepts two arguments. It compares the first argument with the second. It prints. Uh, if the first argument is less than second argument, it prints first is less than second. Otherwise, it prints second is less than first. So uh, everything looks fine here. We have a function. We have two arguments. I've called the function with two uh, integers. Very simple, right? Uh, this should return you first is less than second. Correct? All right? 10 is less than 12. First is less than second. So now look at this. What I'm doing here is instead of passing 12 as the second input or second argument in the compare function, I am passing a string, foo. 
it still gives us an valid output, which is second is less than first. Now, now this is something, this is a problem. This is bizarre, because 10 and a string called foo cannot be compared. But it will still return you a valid output that second is less than first. Uh, and believe me, this is a very small function. But if you have a code base which is huge, and if you have some functions like this, so in place of an integer you pass an string, it's very difficult to debug or find out where the problem is because your program would be uh, running smoothly, there would be no errors, but it's still wrong, right? Uh, you cannot compare 10 and foo. So this is where the problem is. Now, to solve this problem, what I need to do in this code is, I need to basically check if the if dollar first or dollar second is an integer or not, right? This makes sense. So I check if both uh, dollar first and dollar second are integers, then only I compare them. Uh, and now what we'll get? Now I call the same function uh, with ten and string foo, so it will return me an output. Please pass integer inputs. That is correct, right? So this function should accept integer inputs. I'm passing a string, it should return me something to tell me that please pass integer inputs. So uh, I have to write this tedious uh, functions, like this tedious check logic everywhere. Is integer, is array, is empty, is set, uh, to check in my functions that if the types of the variable passed are correct or not. So this could be avoided in PHP 7. Now, uh, PHP 7 uh, uh, is a huge improvement over PHP. I, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, there are many cool features in PHP 7. One is scalar type hinting. So scalar type hinting was introduced in PHP uh, last year. And it was an RFC. Uh, you, can look, you can have a look at the RFC here. The proposal was passed. Uh, and scalar type hinting was introduced in PHP 7. Right, So it was one of the most uh, controversial proposals in PHP. So there is a very heated debate out there on uh, if, we, if we should introduce scalar type hinting on in PHP or not. But I'm not going to go there. Uh, we, the point is we have a feature called scalar type hinting, and we are going to use it in PHP 7, right? So what this means is, uh, let's look at the last example. Uh, this example, right? So it didn't allow me to specify my argument type as integer. It will allow me to specify my argument type as array, object, or callable, which are non-scalar types. But now in PHP 7, this will work fine. Right? So what I've done here is, I have made the same function, adi function. It expects one argument, which is integer. I've specified that this should be an integer. And I'm calling the function, passing an integer, one. So this should work well, and it should return me an output well, output one. So this, this happens in PHP. You could write, in place of integer there, you could write float, you could write boolean, you could write string as well. So this is the contrast I was referring to, right? This is PHP 5, this is PHP 7. So PHP 7, uh, you can specify a method's argument as integer, you could pass and, uh, and it would work. And in PHP 5, it would, it would throw off an error. Now let's see here. This is PHP 7, mm. I'm sorry. Uh, so I've made the same function, function adi function, it accepts an integer. I've specified the argument type as integer. And I'm calling the function by passing a string. So this will return me an error, uncaught type error. Argument one passed to adi function must be of type integer string given. So if you uh, compare this with my last example, the compare function, I needed to check if the passed integer was a, indeed an integer or not. But in, at this stage, PHP 7 does it for, does it, uh, for me. 
So it checks if the past uh, variable, which is hey in this case, the string, which is not matching to the parameter hint, which is integer, or parameter type, which is integer, it will throw an error. Yeah, so this is the same example that we saw earlier. Compare function takes two uh, variables. Uh, it checks if the first variable is less than second variable and basically echoes or prints these statements accordingly. So uh, as you can see here, the last time when we had executed this function, it worked. And it gave us an output second is less than first by comparing 10 and integer 4, which is not uh, which should not be done. But here in PHP 7, this uh, piece of code will throw us an error. Uh, the error would be uncaught type error. Argument to passed to compare function must be of type integer string given. Right? So this is how a type hinting works in PHP 7. You specify the type hints of your arguments when defining a function, and we are calling the function. Uh, you make sure that you follow the type that you're given. So you cannot pass a string in uh, where it's expecting an integer. All right, so uh, what are the benefits of scalar type hinting, right? Uh, so we have seen scalar type hinting, but what are the benefits? Why it was introduced in the first place? So the first benefit is less bugs. So I, we just saw a piece of code which compared two integers, and it allowed us to compare an integer and a string, and it still gave us a valid output. Uh, but, so, I, so these kind of bugs are very difficult to find, especially your code bases, if your code base is very huge. So in that case, type hinting, defining your functions, uh, and your arguments with type hints will reduce your bugs. Code readability, if you give type hints to your function parameters, it improves your code readability. Just by looking at your code, you would see what this function does, what this piece of code does. Concrete function definition. As I told you, right, so if you define a function uh, which accepts three arguments, and if you specify the type of these three arguments, you won't even need to look at the function documentation to see what the function does. Just look at the function definition, you would get to know what this function does. All right, so the next part of this is return type declarations in PHP 7, which is a part of this uh, broad scalar type hinting feature. So uh, by the way, uh, any doubts still here? All right. So, right. So in PHP 7, uh, we could specify the data type of a return value of a function. So if you define a function, if, it suppose, if it's supposed to return an integer, you could specify that this function is supposed to return an integer. So if you look at this code here, in PHP 7, you could do that. Function, are the function, same function. Uh, it takes the same integer argument. But here, if you see the colon uh, thing there, so I've written a colon space integer. So what this means is this function will always return an integer. So the return value there. So this function would always return an integer. So these are the return type declarations. Then add uh, line number seven, I'm basically passing the integer there, and it's returning the same integer. So this function, this uh, piece of code would work, and it will give. Uh, us the output one, okay? Let's look at the same piece of code. Uh, now what I'm doing is, I've defined a function, the return value of, return type of that function is integer, but this function is returning a string. My string is a string. So that is not allowed. So if you define a function uh, with its return value as integer, uh, you cannot return a string. Same way, if you define a function with, re with its return value as string, you cannot return anything else. So uh, this will throw off an error. Return value of RD function must be of type integer string return. Okay? How will it handle null? No, it will not allow null. 
Uh, it will, uh, so, so if your function uh, returns null, there is a possibility that it will return null, so you, you should not use type, uh, return type hints. Yeah? Uh, it's an uh, type error exception, yeah. So we'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah, you could return arrays and objects. That's what I mean. Right. So, uh, what are the features of uh, return type declaration, right? It's a nice contract between the caller and called function. So if I'm calling a function, I could reasonably, I, I could be reasonably sure that this function would return what, what it is promising. So if I'm calling a function which has a return value as an integer, it will always return me an integer, I could be sure of. So I don't, I, I, didn't, I don't need to check the output returned by the function in my program, I don't need to, do those nasty is integer, is string, or is, is empty checks at my end. But this is a great stuff. So yeah, as I told you, no error handling required in the caller function. So if I'm calling something, I, I can be absolutely sure that the function which is returning, which has a return type as uh, a type, it will return the same type. Function definitions are more readable. It's basically complete. So just one look at the function, you would get to know what type of arguments it's expecting and what type of return value it should give. And yeah, uh, so how many of you are Drupal developers here? Oh, sorry, wrong question to ask. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so uh, how many of you remember this uh, is set and not empties? Right, right. So I understand. I mean, even uh, even in the Drupal core functions like user load, node load, they are, so user load can return a false value if the user doesn't exist in the system. So you have to check it in your code. So if you ha if you uh, basically call user load function, you have to check if the user load returns false. That means the user doesn't exist in the system. If it's return an object, user exists in the system. So point is, in Drupal uh, seven code and even in Drupal 8 code, you need to have such checks everywhere in your code. Just uh, for your, uh, just to be safe, just to be sure that you are handling all cases correctly. So uh, by using type hinting, by using type hinting, uh, you don't need to handle these cases. So you could be absolutely sure that what I'm getting here, uh, what, the, what the function is returning is an integer, nothing else. <coughs> All right. Now uh, we saw some concepts of typing, uh, non-scalar typing, scalar typing, uh, return type declarations. Now, see, now we will see how those types are implemented in PHP 7. So PHP 7 has something called as type checking modes. So there are two type checking modes. One is weak mode. So what this weak mode uh, does is, it's your default checking mode. So whatever code you write in PHP 7, by default follows this weak mode. And what weak mode does is, uh, it will still try to perform the type juggling or type, uh, type conversion in case the types don't match, right? So let us look at this piece of code. Uh, you can define weak mode in your file by writing a declare statement, line number three, declare strict types is equal to zero. That means the code which follows, uh, and this should be the first statement in the file. So the code which follows this declare statement will follow the weak mode. And you don't need to do that explicitly because this is by default, uh, PHP 7 by default follows the weak mode. So let us look at the example here. I'm defining the same function, Adi function, which accepts an integer input and returns an integer. But when I try to call that function using one, but it is an string one, this will, this will be passed. This won't throw off any error. Because what it did was, it converted the 
string one into numeric one. And the, for, the program works well. So this is how weak mode works. It will still try to perform type juggling or type converse, uh, conversion if your past value doesn't match the function uh, type hint, or pa sorry, argument type hint. Now let us look at this. This will return a an error. Now let's see what, what's happened here. Same function, same argument, same return value. I have just, instead of numeric one, I've passed a string called hey, which is obviously it's not an integer. So the, con uh, the conversion failed, type juggling failed, it gave us an error, uncaught type error, argument one passed to other function, must be of type integer string given. Yeah. So is this, this is a slightly different kind of type juggling than, uh, no, than without the type hinting though, right? Because that would have otherwise been cast into like a one or something, right? Because you're... Correct, yes. So this is a stronger type, type juggling? The, let's say different kind of type juggling. So uh, weak mode still has some backdoors. So in this case, uh, it will still try to perform type juggling. St uh, string one could be converted into integer one, and that's why this function, this program would succeed. But this code would fail because he could not be converted into an integer. All right, now uh, let's look at the strict mode, what it is. So strict mode, very simple. At the first line of your file, write this statement, declare strict types is equal to one. I have uh, used the same function, adi function. It accepts one argument, integer argument. It returns an integer. And now I'm calling that function down, and I'm passing one, which is a string one. In this case, it will not allow at all. Because this is PHP's strict mode, it will not allow a string value. Even if it's one, it will not allow a string value when it's expecting an integer value. So this is the crucial difference between uh, PHP's weak mode and strict mode. So in weak mode, it allowed us to pass a string one when it's expecting an integer parameter, but in strict mode, it didn't allow us. Sorry? Is it, is it a declaration for a function that passed? It's, it's, it's uh, based upon a file. So if, if when, you, uh, when you write a PHP file, and if you write a declare statement here, so all functions called uh, from that file will follow the strict checking in this case. Yeah? You said weak mode default, right? Weak mode default. Sorry? No. no. So uh, the, the point was, the uh, point, yeah, sorry. It's in a file. So it's file-wise. So when you write a file, and when you, it should, those are de declare statement should be the first statement in your file. And the functions which are called in your files, the call, the function calls, would follow the strict, the type checking mode that you are defined. I, I believe you can toggle that. You can actually go strict, and further on in the same file, change the strict mode, and then line just like you can change your namespace. Uh, I don't think so because, yeah. Uh, I think this statement should be the first line in your program. What I'm saying is, is if you're going through and writing declare, mm -hmm. it's like with zero, function, 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 and then you just declare strictly with one, mm -hmm. function, function, function. If you can do that in line, it's, it toggles it once it hits that line. Right. So, I, I mean, I haven't tried that, but certainly an interesting piece to look at. Yeah. Sure. Okay. 
So the reason uh, to, for PHP to uh, follow the default weak mode is they didn't want to enforce the type system on everybody. So they still wanted to preserve their ethos of being a very dynamic and flexible language. But still wanted their developers to use strong typing, just in case if they want to use them. You could very well uh, use strict typing in your own custom code. Some uh, important points to note here. Return type declarations are optional. The only type conversion allowed is integer to float. So if your function is expecting an argument of float, you could still pass that function an argument of integer. Because the, argu uh, the, the point here is if you convert an integer into float, no data is lost. But if you try to convert a float into integer, data could be lost, right? So even in, even in strict typing, the only type conversion allowed is integer to float. And null is still allowed as a default value for a function parameter. So this uh, snippet is still valid. What I've done here is uh, I've created one function that accepts in float. I've passed it an integer. It, type, uh, it allowed us to do so. And it allowed us to set a default null value also. Can you also pass null? Sorry? Can you also pass null? No, I don't think so. You don't pass null. Mm. So if you don't want to pass anything, so that's, that, I mean, that's the point of default value, right? No, this is just an example. Right, right. So th that is correct. So this is just an example of to show you that this could be done. I would not personally do it because that would defeat the purpose of typing for me. Uh, but still, this is something you could do. All right. So, uh, so anybody remember this? The white screen of that. <laughs> okay. Right. So anybody who has worked with PHP applications or Drupal must know this, right? So there was an error in your PHP script. Your PHP script halts. And it, it does not return HTML. And you, what, what you see is a white screen of that. So PHP 7 has an interesting uh, tool, which are called as engine exceptions. So what they do is they throw uh, your most common errors as an exception, so you could handle them and end your script or end your program gracefully. So, and type exceptions are one of those exceptions. To answer your question, uh, so yeah, look at this piece of code. I have one function, which is expecting an integer, returning an integer, and I've passed it and string one. And this is the strict mode, as you can see from the top. So this will throw us and this will throw a type error. So I've caught the type error here. And it will basically allow you to handle in whatever way you like to. So this is how type errors are thrown in PHP, if there are type violations. So some of you might think this is DrupalCon, right? So uh, what about Drupal? So what we are talking about PHP till now. So what about Drupal? So I believe Drupal 8 and PHP 7 is a great combination. I've tried that personally. And uh, Drupal 8 as an, has a 100% pass on PHP 7. So all automated tests on Drupal, of Drupal 8 
passed on PHP 7. So you could technically use PHP 7 in your Drupal 8 development. Drupal 7, I think there are still a couple of issues to be solved. So Drupal 7 is not 100% compatible with PHP 7, but Drupal 8 is. Right, so uh, let's look at a typed D8 module and what, my, what I mean by typed D8 module is we are using PHP 7 to build a D8 module with the typing features that we just saw. So it's a very dumb module. It, what it does is it takes a string, it uh, removes your spaces, uh, converts your characters into lowercase, and uh, it will throw a string like this. So basically to convert your string into a URL format, maybe, yeah? The module, so sorry. So let me uh, go back. So uh, this is the module, a pretty basic module. It's a form where I could just write my name or any, any string. It will return the slugified version of that string. Pretty simple, right, basic. Now let's look at the code. Right. So uh, for those who know Drupal 8 module development, we have a info YML file, uh, we have a form, okay? So it's a very simple form. Uh, it's a, it's a, it has a URL field and a, uh, a submit button. So what I've done here is uh, Drupal 8 uh, recommends you to follow a service-based architecture. So whatever you have to do, create a service out of it, and then inject your service into the piece of code where you want that service. So I, am, I have created a service called Slugify service, which is nothing but a class and a function inside it, right? So it actually performs the operation of converting a string into its slugified version. It's a pretty simple basic code. And yeah. So if you could see, uh, I have created this service. I've extended an interface from here. So this interface has my function prototype, slugify function, and as you can see here, I have given type hints for every parameter, right? So the, you could not do this in PHP 5. So this is something you could do in PHP 7. And if you try to run this uh, piece of code in PHP 5, it will throw an error. So same thing, I've implemented the same function in my class where I've implemented that interface. Uh, same arguments, return value, and then I've used this function. I've injected that function uh, here in this form uh, via constructor, and I have used this slug service slugify function. So, so this function, I could be absolutely sure that sh this would return me a string, and this would accept a string all the time. So uh, so the point is, when writing our own services, we could start using the typing features. We could start creating uh, function prototypes like this. And uh, this would be a great way to start using the typing features of PHP 7 in your Drupal 8 code. So yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, that was all from me. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Could you could you go to the mic, please? I'm not able to. 
So in the last example you gave here, uh, if you would implement an, ex an exception in Sorry. Drupal, how would, uh, how would you do that uh, typically? You, are, you want to know how to catch an exception? No, just uh, if you would uh, wrap an ex exception around this example, the last example you gave. You want to see how to catch an exception here? Yeah. In this example? Yeah. All right. What I could do here is where I am basically using this form, using this function, <laughs> I have to try, a try catch. You could do that. No, I'm just giving example how to catch an exception. So this, in this case specifically, we, could, we should do a validate form, technically, when, when writing code. <coughs> All right, let's try. Yeah, you would pro, you would set a form error in this example, right? Hmm? You would you would set an e a form error in this mm. example. Form error. Or you would do this in a validate. Uh, oh, function, so right. okay. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you how to uh, catch an exception yeah. in case uh, the slugify function here accepts a string. So I'm passing an integer. So it should it's likely to throw an error. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just showing how to catch an error and basically handle it in your own way. Maybe show a message to maybe redirect the user somewhere. Mm. Thank you. Anything? Yeah. So you could uh, basically write anything in your catch function and handle that error. Yeah. So uh, Drupal 8 uh, works with PHP 5. So this concept here with uh, adding the type to the function, th that only works if you're using, uh, like you can't write uh, a user contributed modules and post them with the, these concepts because then you correct. they won't work in PHP 5. Correct, correct. So That's a good point. I mean, what, how do you, what's the best way for? That's a good point. Uh, because you cannot force anyone to use PHP 7 and your Cont contributed module, then if you write a contributed module using typing features, uh, so you are generally, you are actually forcing the users to using PHP 7. But technically Drupal 8 could run in PHP 5.6 also. So the best way to do it is to write your own custom code uh, in PHP 7. So if you are contributing modules, don't use typing. But it's more likely that you'll see typed code in future as people generally progress towards Drupal 7, yeah. endemic polymorphism in Drupal core, right? So you'll have these doc blocks that are like, Correct. I'll take a string or an array or an integer and I'll process it according to the input, right? Mm -hmm. And then the same thing, right? Like user load is, you know, you'll get a, either a user object or false. Mm -hmm. So I is there some accommodation for that with typing or is this so new to PHP that kind of like the question earlier, we can't say we're gonna return a string or false, right? But how do you, how right. would you suggest you handle that kind of polymorphism? Uh, 
I think the best way to start is to when you're writing your own code, when you're writing your own service that could be used in some other modules, uh, to make your own service as typed. So basically, your service would be typed, but uh, you are not forcing anyone else to do that same thing. So you would have to, as of now, you would have to do the error handling that you, we used to do. But at least you could make your own module type that others won't have to handle that as of now. So is there, if I'm writing a, so if I have a bot, uh, service, right, and it's gonna look something up and either return me an object or mm -hmm. false, right? Mm -hmm. You basically in PHP seven still couldn't type the return value because you'd either return false or an object. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Once once again, I'm just wrapped in you know, like sort of asking the whole time and like if if actual var equals, you know, some function, then you know, then call the type function. Or the function that's gonna type for or some of the Okay, yeah. Type pending re reduce the need for triple equals? Triple equals? No, I don't think so. Strong typing would not. I mean, sorry, the strict mode would not. Right. Uh, anyone else? Anything? Okay, then uh, thank you. And. Uh, You can have a look at that code in the Git repository if you want to. And please give the feedback for this session uh, on this URL. Yeah, thank you.